So today's lab, we will use Tableau uh, to analyze data in a data warehouse. So today we will see that how uh, how powerful the data analytics can be and, and also how easy the visualization can be, can help us understand data, identify patterns. Um, so the data that we are going to use is um, this database, so that is a ticket. That is a sample Amazon Redshift database. Redshift is a, a data warehouse solution on AWS, and we will use a Redshift that um, server that on AWS that has this data set. So it is a, a, in this data warehouse or in this database, um, we see that we have the events that um, we are selling the tickets for different events. For, so for each single event, we have a category and we have a, a place or venue that where the event uh, happened. And if you click those uh, tables, you will see the more details about each single column. And for each single event, we have multiple lists. So we, we are selling the, uh, the tickets for each single event. So for each single event, we have multiple listing. So that is the one to many relationship, okay? And also event to the others is many to one relationship. And for each single list, we have multiple sales. Okay, so for this listing table, we have the total price that we are planning to sell. And in this sale table that for each single list, we have multiple sales. In this multiple sales, uh, we have the total price that being paid uh, by the users and also uh, we also have the commission that has to be paid um, uh, to the theaters uh, I, I think so yes so we have commissions that is 15% uh, commissions that the business business we are collected from the sale okay so the relationship between listing and the sales is one too many relationships so this is the error so the, uh, they should be one to many relationship and they can be linked by this listing ID. Uh, of course, the sales and event is also one to many relationship. So one event has multiple listing, one listing has multiple sales. So one event can also has, has multiple sales and they all being connected by this event ID. Uh, we also have the users table, which can be the buyers and also can be the sellers. So the user ID, can be connected depending, they can be connected to the user ID or the buyer ID. Okay, so that is a very uh, traditional um, uh, schema of the of the relational database, which is hosted on uh, a data warehouse. So data warehouse is a, a more powerful data container that allows us uh, to do more powerful, more complicated queries. Okay, so now let's start uh, Tableau. So we will use Tableau to explore the data from data warehouse. And so here for this lab, so let's connect to Redshift. Again, you can see I already filled in the server URLs so you can find find out those information on Canvas. The port is uh, 5439, which is the default port. Database is DEV username is demo and password is also on canvas so now i type the password and now i just sign in so that i can connect a mongo uh, tableau to this uh, database and uh, if i choose a uh, public now i can see those multiple tables are here so right now they are separate tables and we know that logically they are connected with each other uh, so in Tableau, keep in mind that normally we'll drag the most detailed table first. So in this case, the most detailed table is the sales table. So we will drag the sales table first. Otherwise, if you drag the other table first, and you will have some errors. You may have some errors. So let's drag the sales tables first. And we will see a preview. So if you click update and you'll see a preview. Okay. So after 
Tableau 2020.2. So they changed uh, the way that to model the data. So if you double click, so that now you are in this physical level, so you can join multiple tables together. For example, uh, the sale can be joined with the listing. Okay, and you can define that how they are going to be joined together, and you can define is that left join, right join, inner join, etc. Okay, so that is the original way that we join multiple tables. So uh, the result will be a very very a wide table that flattered all the results together. So that is at the physical level. So let's remove that one. Uh, however, in the in the latest one model that if we go back, so now Tableau support uh, modeling data at the logic level. So right now we can model data at the logic level so that each tables will be still be captured as separate resource. So for example, if I still drag the listing, okay, and you can define, so how are the two tables related with each other? So we know that they are connected. Those two tables are connected by this list ID. So let's choose uh, list ID equals list ID, okay? And here we can, if we want, increase the performance, and we can also uh, change the other parameters. For example, we know that each single cell can only have one list, and each list can have multiple cells. And all the cells must match a list, and also all the list should belong to a cell. Okay, all the lists should belong to some sales. So, uh, so by defining that, we can increase the performance of the Tableau. Okay, so now we have two tables at the logic level. And again, if you double click the listing sales, you can join that one with event. Okay, if you like. Uh, however, let's also keep that at everything at the logic level for now. So let's drag event. Let's relate event to the list. And we know that for event and the list, that is also based on this event ID. That is, uh, each single event can have multiple lists, and each single list belongs to one event. So let's say event ID equals uh, event ID. And so one event can have multiple lists. Okay. And they should all match, all records should match with each other. Hopefully. Okay. And for event, we have additional information. For example, uh, for each event, we know which category that event belongs to and also where is uh, that event happened. So that in which city or state. So let's relate the others together. So let's for category. Uh, we can use category ID and for the performance we see that uh, one event only has one category and one category can be matched to multiple events and each event definitely has a category however each category may have some records and may not okay and I think that is the same scenario for the uh, for the venue table Okay, uh, so one event can only have one place, and one place can host multiple events. Okay, and finally, let's bring the user information. So the user is linked to cell table directly, so that the user ID can be uh, linked to the buyer ID or can be linked to the seller ID. So for this lab, let's link to the seller ID because we're interested in the sellers. So let's bring user. And here we see that the seller ID equals and user ID. Okay. And for the performance options, um, we see that uh, one seller can sell multiple sales and one sale can only have one seller. So we we assume that the, the users do not split the bill. Okay. 
and we say all records match. Okay, false users, just some rec records match. Okay, again, so this is the logic model of our data set. So uh, the difference between logic model and also physical model is that at the physical level, so we do uh, join the tables uh, physically and also we create a very big white table. So we flat all with so we denormalized the tables at the logic level. Uh, so they are just related. So they are not uh, physically joined. Uh, so that provide a lot of flexibilities. So this is a really new feature that in Tableau 2020.2 and after. All right. So now let's go back to go to sheet and before we create any visualizations. So let's save this workbook. Uh, so let's save that one into our uh, OneDrive folder. Uh, okay, and this is our lab four. And I, I also call it lab four workbook. Okay, so now you can see the difference. So that uh, at the physical level, so each table are still kept in separately. Okay, so individually. Okay. And if you join that at a physical level, and uh, in that case, also tip, uh, you will have a very, very wide table. So yeah, let actually let me show one example. So for example, for this event, so if I drag this one to the physical level, okay. So now if I update, you can see that event table and also uh, category table now has been joined together. So we have this very wide uh, table. And now if we go to the sheet, we can see for the event, we have all the records that in this physical level. Okay. However, in this scenario, it is not re re uh, necessary. So let's remove the category. So we just join relate those two at the logic level. Okay. So now you can see we have a uh, very clear uh, tables that for the events we only have columns for the events all right and um, let's do some uh, uh, data cleaning so let's say we move event ID to as mirrors so we may use that one later um, let's also move the venue ID into uh, mirrors because they are not cat categorical ID as mirrors okay um, and also for the price, so let's say for the total price, uh, let's change that one. Uh, let's change the format. So we know that is uh, currency. So let's say we change that one to the currency, and we want to display at a thousand, a uh, thousand. Okay, so that is for the total price, and uh, let's do the same thing for the price paid. Okay, uh, format. And let's change that one to thousand. Okay. And next, uh, let's see for the menus. We know that for the cities, so let's change that rules to the city. And for the state, let's change that one to the state. Okay. So just do some data cleaning part. Or, all right, and for the sales, so we know that uh, we have the price paid. We also have the commission. Okay, so let's also create a new calculated field. Let's call it the net income. So let's create a new calculated field. Let's call it net income, which equals the price paid minus the commission. We know that commission was collected by the business. Okay, and you can see this new field is still belong to this sale table. And let's, ch let's change the format of that one as well. So let's use uh, $1,000. All right, so those are some basic data cleaning. Okay, so this might be a little bit complicated. So please feel free to pause the video here. Um, you may want to see uh, the logic model that I created here. And also you may also go back and double check with uh, with this diagram. Okay.
just keep in mind that this is the error so that relationship between listing and sales is one to many. I was confused earlier, but after I uh, play with the data several times and realize that there's one list for multiple sales. Okay, one list for mo has multiple sales. All right, so now I think it, we are ready to create some visualizations. Uh, so our first visualization is that I want to see that the number of the events in each category. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see that we have the category names, category ID. Okay, so uh, let's see the relationship between category and the events. We know that for each category, we have multiple events. So each category ID we are has belong uh, to a category name. Okay, so we can see we have those groups, sports, shows, concerts. And within each group, uh, we have the names. Okay, so we have multiple categories. Okay, for sports, we have NBA, NFL, etc. And also for shows, we have those place operas. For concerts, we have pop, jazz, classical, etc. Okay, and now how does that relate to events? We know that each single event, so now I'm going to drag the event ID here. Okay, so each single event belong to one specific category, which belong to one specific group. Okay. And if we put event earlier, and each single event has only one category. OK. So hopefully now you're, you're with me. So we can see the, so that is man, uh, many to one relationship. So now we want to count the number of the events per category. So it's very simple. So let's just count, go to the columns. And now we can see it is one. So if we if we drag that one out, and we don't need category ID. Okay, and we can see for each category, so the number of events. So we can also sort that, and we see we don't have any jazz classic. We don't also have any sports. Okay, so the most uh, popular category is called pop. Okay, which has almost five thousand events. Okay, we also see there is a structure between group and also name. Okay, we know that there are three groups and within each groups we have multiple categories. Okay, so this is what we call the hierarchy. Okay, and in Tableau we can create a hierarchy so that we can enable this drill down and queries. So we just simply put a name and on top of this group, so now we create a hierarchy. So let's give it a name. I just call it category. OK, so now you can see we can have this drill down list. So if I, you know, um, click this plus button and I can see at the group levels, how many concerts and also how many shows. And if I expand, I will see the details about the uh, each categories and I can also put the descriptions uh, into the tool tip okay uh, not to the detail into the tool tip okay so now if I put move the mouse I can see the descriptions okay so that is pretty nice so that is the drill down function in Tableau um, we can also even uh, fill out uh, or exclude the other categories that we don't have any events. So let's for sports, let's exclude that one. And for for the other two, let's also exclude those two. Okay. So that is our uh, first visualization that we want to see the number of events in each category. All right. Uh, so let's move on to our second one. So our second one, I want to compare the average price paid 
versus the total price listed at each place. OK, so that requires the data from multiple tables. And Tableau will do a great job to join those tables depending on the queries. So let's bring the total price that listed. And you can see they are using a format that we predefined. And also the total price that's being paid. So that is real paid by, um, by the users. OK, and we can see by default, uh, we see this aggregated result. Uh, of course, we have uh, more price listed and also less price being paid. Okay, mm, that is normal because, for example, we want to sell 200 tickets, but actually we just sold uh, probably 100 or 50 tickets. All right, so let's say we want to see that one at each uh, category. So what we can do, we can just drag the category into colors. OK, and so now we're looking at the level of the details per category so that remember that we have three categories and one of them we don't have any result. So that is the spot. So that's why we have two. OK, so we have uh, two dot points. So if we expand that one into the the the, the categories, not the group levels, OK, and now we have four dots. OK. Actually, let's put a name into color. OK, and uh, we can we have plays, uh, musical, opera and also pop. And we have the other seven noun values. Those are belong to the those are the uh, categories that we don't have any events. So let's fill out that data. OK. Uh, so now we have only four markers. OK, so that is at the category level. So right now, I want to see that one at the venue level, OK, the place level. So what I can do is that I can bring the venue ID, which is now dimensions, into the detail. OK. So now we can see that for each single place and also for each single category. So what are the price being paid and also what are the price that uh, total price being listed so that we can see, of course, we have more price listed. We have all more price being paid. So let's switch that one to average. OK, so we, I want to see that on average um, that how it look like. OK. And now we can see on average, OK, this place has a uh, higher, uh, this place has the highest average of the price paid. And this place has the highest of the average price uh, price being listed. OK. And what if I want to know which, where is it? OK, remember that we have the place names or the city names. So we can drag the city name into the tool tip. OK, so just as we did earlier. OK, and this can, this can be a little bit slower because now we are sending the queries to the data warehouse. OK, and we can say this is a New York. OK, and this is also New York. OK, and we can see they are from different uh, places. OK, um, of course, we can also uh, add trend lines as we did uh, uh, last um, lab. OK, uh, which may or may not be necessary. So depending on if you like, you can just keep the trend lines. If you not, and you can drag the trend line out. Uh, we can also customize the tool tip. So for example, if we click the tool tip, and you can see those are all the information that right now on this chart. So we can delete that one and we can write a customized uh, tool tip. We see that the the average paid price of uh, this show in 
this city is this and the average listed price is and now let's see the average total price and we can also give it different colors so for example this one I can give it uh, probably a, a brown color or orange color and for this one I can give it um, let's see a red color okay so now if you move the mouse you can see that for different places okay so that is customize the tool tip and also add in the trend line uh, we can also add a drop line so if you right click drop lines and we can see show drop lines so that will if you click each single marker so that will give you those reference lines that allow you to do a very accurate um, comparison okay for the both x and also y axis okay uh, we can also add a notation so for example for this point let's say we can add a notation so if you want to highlight this single point uh, so we can say this is New York New York City has the highest total price okay so that uh, yes it is New York okay highest average total price okay uh, so that we can add to our tip trend lines and also we can enable the drop lines okay and also on the legend so when you highlight the uh, we enable the highlight okay and uh, you can see uh, highlight the different categories in tableau which is also uh, very nice okay uh, let's move on let's say that I want to say that compare uh, the total price versus the listed price for each category okay and which we can use a bullet graph so let's uh, select the total price being paid and also control key and also total price listed and go to show me and you can see the bullet graph is here by default that is supported okay and this may not be accurate uh, because some cases the list price might be double counted so you have to be very careful and I want as I said I want to see that into different categories so I can drag the category into the rows okay and I can also fill out the non data okay because we have one the spots that we don't have any events in spots okay and now if you expand this uh, categories and you can see um, at at different group level or at different category levels so how they uh, worked okay on this bullet chart okay uh, we can also enable colors so for example uh, if we put name into colors okay and you can see one thing that is very nice is that so uh, Tableau is very consistent using colors so that in this case we can see pop is always in red okay all over the those visualizations okay and for this one if we use drag that one and you can see pop so for the same category they always use the same colors so the color are very consistent in in Tableau which is very nice and also very important and uh, and also we can change the formats so for example uh, if you want to change the font size etc so you can always just right click and go to format okay where you can change the font okay uh, for example uh, you can uh, put that into bold 
okay and also you can add change colors okay so uh, and it is a <coughs> it's very easy to change the the format of your visualizations all right so that is the bully chart uh, let's say I also want to know that who are the top sellers. Okay, I want to know the top sellers. So to, to, to say that, we need to bring the sellers. Okay, remember that we uh, collect the users to the seller ID. So also right now we have all the sellers. So let's bring all the sellers. And let's see how the total price Okay, to the sale table that the total price being paid. Okay, so here we have uh, this table which can be changed that into a you know uh, this highlight table or the heat map etc. Uh, however, we let's just use a, a bar chart which is uh, easier. Okay. Okay, and we can see uh, this bar chart. And we know that uh, we have too many users. That is, uh, so we have this very long bar chart. So that may generate some discomforting feelings for the audience. So let's just say we want only the top 10 sellers. So what we can do is that we can hit the control key and drag the last name to the filters. And we go to the top let's say we just want the top 10 based on the total of the price being paid okay based on the total price being paid okay so now we have this top 10 okay uh, and we have their last name okay so the top 10 sellers and the first one second one etc okay so that is the top 10 sellers and finally I want to see a map that shows that how the total net income, remember that we have this net income, are distributed all over different cities. Okay, uh, so if we double click the cities, uh, we will have a map showing the location of the cities. Okay, and however, we have uh, 58 cities that is unknown so let's open that one and let's see you can add it to the locations and if you know where they are you can just double click and tell them which locations they are so by telling uh, the coordinates however the problem here is that you see we have Arlington and also Atlanta and those um, tableau is not sure because uh, in in United States, there are multiple cities called Arlington and multiple cities called Atlanta. So Tableau is not sure which Arlington or Atlanta this city is talking about. And fortunately, we do we also have this state. Okay, uh, we also have this state. And so you can see for each single state, we also still have uh, four unknown state. Uh, because those states are in Canada, okay, so not in United States, because we choose this one as uh, United States. So if there is a way that we can tell Tableau that which state those cities belong to, so that can help Tableau to identify those locations, right? So if we can tell Tableau, okay, which state each city is belong to, and that can help reduce those uncertainties. So to do that, we can create another hierarchy. OK, so if we click city and drag that one to state and release, and now we create a hierarchy and we call it place. So now we can see state is at the top level and also city is the second level. So now if we double click we can see we only have seven cities that are unknown. Okay, so we know that, okay, so this Atlanta is belong to Georgia. Okay, and looks like this Baltimore is belong to Maryland. And if you look at those unknown cities, we know that those cities is because they belong to the state that is, is, is in Canada. 
Okay, uh, so that's uh, that can help us reduce those unknown cities, which is great. So let's fill out those unknown cities. And now the, uh, it's very easy so that we can just drag the uh, the net income as a size. OK, and also we can increase the size a little bit. And we can see that New York has, you know, uh, the most number of the net income. And if you like, you can also change the background maps, OK, the background images, etc. So we are going to do that one later. OK, uh, so that is uh, the final sheet we need to create for this lab. So again, uh, this is a very uh, comprehensive lab. So we are using uh, the data warehouse to support those queries so that we drawing those tables together depending on the relationship that are defined in the data set. And now tab Tableau support the logical uh, logical models so that we are designing the relationships at the logical level, not the physical level. And next, we create those visual visualizations, for example, number of the events in different category, how the price paid versus price uh, uh, listed for different uh, cities. And also uh, for the, how, how the price uh, paid and also was uh, listed for different categories. And we also identify the top 10 users, top 10 sellers. And also we create a map to show that which city made, made the most uh, profit. So finally, we can combine all those uh, sheets together into this dashboard. Uh, we'll talk about how to visualize design the dashboard later. So right now, let's just create a very quick uh, dashboard. OK, I want to put that one here. Uh, you can design your own uh, dashboard, so you don't need to follow uh, Uh, my example, so all right. So that is a basic layout. So let's change that one to uh, automatic. Okay, and let's also hide those titles so that to give us more space. And make sure we are using entire views for those bar chart. Okay. And finally, make sure that uh, the legend is close to those visualizations. So this belongs to the map. And this one belongs to the uh, this scat plot. So I put them together so that uh, to save the space. All right, and uh, finally, let's add a title. So this is our uh, very long lab four. Yeah, I wish you, you have learned something that from this lab, uh, this is the is a is a pretty much standard format that how we can use data warehouse and also BI tools to generate some insight from the data. And if you like, uh, you can also enable this one as a filter, so that can give you a, a more powerful um, um, <coughs> analytical functions. Like if you click the the pop. All the other sheets will show the, the events that of the pop. OK, so let's see how that uh, look like. This may take a while, OK? Yes, you can see the users, etc. And if I just want to see the opera. OK, 
Uh, you can of course uh, enable the others as uh, the filters. Okay, so that will allow you to export the data easier. All right, so that is for this lab, and uh, let's save it, the workbook, and also let's export this um, image. So that is our lab four.